This is Twit. The open source GameWorks competitor, aka Mantle for Linux, aka AMD's latest bid for world domination on all platforms and all environments. They're trying, aren't they? They're, tr- they're, they're trying. trying. I admire their spirit. On on Tuesday, uh, we actually hosted a live interview here at our office uh, with AMD's Richard Huddy, who has the uh, interesting title of gaming scientist. And um, as I had him explain it in the video, if you go watch the interview, uh, the gaming scientist, as uh, as as it's presented from AMD, is meant to facilitate discussions between the hardware engineers and the game developers, the software developers that utilize that hardware. So the idea is to make sure that uh, the hardware vendor is the, the, the engineers are doing what the software vendors want them to do and vice right. versa um, and to kind of facilitate new cool tech being introduced into the ecosystem as often as possible. It's a pretty cool job. Uh, Richard has a long history in the industry, uh, started at 3D Labs, was actually before that worked for the company whose name I am blanking on right now that uh, Microsoft purchased in order to create the original DirectX. Um and then he worked at uh, NVIDIA. He worked at ATI. He was part of the group when it was acquired by AMD, uh, worked for Intel, and then now is back at AMD at this particular role. Um, and, you know, they, we've, had, we've had vendors out to our studio quite often to talk about products and, and to talk about new technologies, but they weren't actually talking about new products or new technologies, rather wanted to give kind of a state of the a state of the world, if you will, in 3D graphics as they saw it. And uh, it's a really, really interesting interview. I'm not going to go over everything that was discussed. It's about 90 minutes long. But if you have any interest in gaming or graphics, it's definitely worth a, a watch. He's an engaging speaker, funny, and uh, has a lot of interesting, interesting things to say. But what was cool was that there are a handful of, uh, like, kind of news items that he discussed. It was the first time I'd heard of anything and the first time I think anybody had heard of some of this stuff. Maybe the most interesting of which was um, the that they are in the planning stages of something called uh, OpenWorks. That's kind of a working title. They don't know what they're going to call it. But um, if you remember our discussions over the last several weeks about NVIDIA GameWorks and AMD's right. problems with it and how it was not an API anymore and how it had become a middleware and how it could potentially damage uh, the performance of... AMD graphics cards going forward or in AMD uh, card users. And basically what, what AMD seems like they're planning to do, although I don't know exactly when they would implement it, is they want to create like an open source repository of code for these same types of visual effects. So like Tress effects would be one of the items in such a repository. There might be a, a, a lighting effects or engine effects mm-hmm. or hair effects uh, that would be uh, uh, included in this repository, but then it would be open source. So anybody from any other company or software developer or a hardware vendor could come in and modify the code, tweak it so that it runs a little bit better on their hardware than it did before. Uh, they could add new effects in so that, uh, you know, the rest of the community would be able to utilize those effects and change them and integrate them in their engine as they would. Basically an attempt to create an open source version of what NVIDIA GameWorks is today or what NVIDIA wants it to become. Mm -hmm. And it's a really interesting idea. And and it all comes down, it it comes down to the debate of our companies, how how willing are companies to donate their time and resources and intellectual property into this kind of community-based thing uh, that would, I believe it would actually improve the experience for pretty much anybody that takes advantage of it, or are, are these companies going to be more self, more interested in their self-preservation? You know, they don't want to share any of the new cool effects that they have. Uh, they don't want to uh, allow their competing software vendors to, you know, have access to any of their IP or their hardware vendors to have access to any of their uh, uh, special effects that they would create. And it really kind of comes down to the Majority of the time, the fundamental difference between what AMD's goals are and what NVIDIA's goals are. I don't think NVIDIA has any negative intentions with what they do, but they they seem very content to you know focus on their user base as opposed to let's make sure everybody across all user bases is having a fair and equal treatment of things. Right. Um, and I, and I, I thought it was interesting. And it's like I said, it's in the it's in the planning stages. It's, it's a beginning thing that could happen, uh, but. Its success depends not on AMD 
you know, simply creating the repository. The success depends on other organizations and other companies using it, utilizing it, adding to it, mm -hmm. modifying it, and making it a useful resource as opposed to just a new name for what AMD has already been doing for years and years. Um, that was that was that was probably the most. I would say the most starting, startlingly new thing that Richard Huddy mentioned in that. Hey, they also talked about the timeline for when man. <laughs> so that would be by the end of 2014, mm -hmm. where Intel or NVIDIA would have access to the SDK to, if they wanted to, write a driver that could run Mantle games. Uh -huh. um, I don't think that will happen, but they would have the opportunity to. Uh, they talked about Mantle possibly coming to Linux. And, and that would be interesting because that would be the first kind of competitor to OpenGL in terms of APIs on uh, SteamOS and Linux-based gaming systems. Uh, and they talked about the adaptive sync, free sync differences and availability of that and stuff. I mean, there, there, was, there were some interesting things in there. Um, I don't know if any, any of those other topics really stood out to you individually or, or anything, but... Um, I wrote up a news post that kind of summarizes what I thought the right. interesting, unique things he mentioned were that were new news as opposed to uh, stuff that we had heard before. Uh, but the whole interview is, is is actually really, really good, I think. And if you missed I mean, it live, you should have been there live because we gave away $3,000 <laughs> worth of graphics cards as well. I'm pretty sure I'm... I'm uh... I'm uh, exempt from those kind of contests. You are not eligible. That's true. <laughs> I am not eligible. <laughs> I was also pouring antifreeze into a car at that point. I mean, it's interesting to watch like kind of the motivations and the longer goals of the, of, of both AMD and, and, and NVIDIA as they try to sort of, I still, it still comes down to like, can I manipulate the market? Can I control the market? Can I get the advantage? And uh, man, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I think it's a wait and see situation.